Uh, at the beginning, I started to write uh, the uh, thermal aggregation for MediaTek uh, for one of their drivers. Uh, but actually, I don't think we need it for MediaTek. Uh, they have used it, the thermal aggregation, as a workaround for a uh, driver that was not uh, properly written. And uh, today, I'm not sure that we still need it for MediaTek. Uh, so it's all done, I can go back to home. No. Uh, another option, uh, another need we could have uh, maybe the uh, idea, uh, the power allocator governor. So, one usage we could have with that uh, would be to feed uh, the, to, to drive the PID loop. So, that one use case we could have with the thermal aggregation. Uh, I, I would be curious if uh, in the room there is uh, maybe some people that will need the aggregation and that would have some use case for it. Uh, I guess that's no. We, we, we do. Wait, wait. Oh, All right. Yeah. I don't think you can stand up. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. I, I, don't know, I, I don't know what aggregation totally means. Do you mean that? Like we have virtual sensors, which is nothing but X, Y, you know, yes, some quadratic dependent you know, equation. Sensors and we wanted to uh, aggregate the uh, temperature and other uh, values uh, to get one virtual uh, thermal zone from so, those sensors. Okay, yeah, it's okay. We do, yes. Okay. Uh, so is there something that would be useful for you? <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. But for but, uh, but, but, use case for the. Uh, for yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I didn't look at your full, how you're proposing, but in general, the way our virtual sensor works, it just, it's not just sensor aggregation, but it also has inputs from other subsystem. Like you have one sense CPU sensor, for example, but you want to interpolate what my skin is, temperature would be. Yeah. So, so that, in sensor plus one, maybe some other sensor, but you know they don't have a sensor on the skin. So that plus your CPU utilization and what parts are closer to that. It, okay. So it's also an equation. So it's not just sensor aggregation, sensor plus other inputs you can get. So um, initially, the when I uh, did the uh, aggregation, uh, it was for one specific use case of Minitech, which was uh, getting the uh, uh, maximum temperature of the SOC. So it was taking all the sensors and was extracted the maximum value. Uh, the proposal I made was not uh, generic enough. It was just for uh, device tree. Uh, so uh, the whole new one I would like to introduce will be more generic and will be usable with uh, device tree and um, uh, CCFS and eventually a CPI. I don't have any knowledge about the CPI, but I think it should be feasible. Uh, the idea is to create a new thermal zone uh, from other existing thermal zone. So if we take a CPU, uh, we can have uh, one thermal zone for each uh, CPU thermal sensor and to create a new virtual, uh, a new thermal zone that will uh, aggregate all the CPU temperatures to uh, provide a new one. In the, yeah. So I, I don't know, Rafael, you have, we have time to talk now or discuss because you have a short time? Or... So anyway. So, yeah, so like here, I, I'm still having issue with thermal zone as aggregator, right? Your, your DTU has a thermal sensor, right? Why don't you call thermal sensor? Why you call it zone, right? Zone, zone itself has cooling devices and other things, right? So sensor is aggregation of sensors. Uh, well, so, so you, you, well, maybe just to clarify, the, the idea is to aggregate the sensors inside the thermal zone. So you don't aggregate thermal zones, you aggregate sensors. So you would, in the description, because well, in the device tree, for example, we have the thermal zone and you point to the, to, the, to the hardware, the sensor, and you can put 
several sensors for the same time as on and saying, okay, we will use the maximum, the average or whatever. Um, for the DT, it's already, we already have the binding, but it's not implemented. So yeah, it's, it's not a, about aggregating time as on. See from user space what sensor segregated. No, right? That's what so eight one thermal zone doing the aggregation of all the all these sensors, and you can create per sensor a new thermal zone. So yeah, yeah, but but the point is that three of us would like to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Srinivas would like to know which uh, which sensors are involved in the aggregation. If this is an aggregate, uh, why why do you need this information? Uh, well, because user space may need it, like for some computations uh, or debug or something. Yeah, it's not not an unuseful piece of information, in my opinion. You can put that in debugfs. Yeah, debugfs or even a, or, or even in SysFS if this is an aggregate zone, just you know, uh, because it is good to know that it is aggregate and not uh, not a like sensor related or sensor attached thermal zone. So, uh, so you know that the temperature is not uh, doesn't come from the sensor directly, right? When the When it's broken, you need to know its components to find out, you know, is the math broken or is one of the subsensors broken, right? Yeah, okay. I don't know if this one's working. A little bit, yeah. Because it will be broken. <laughs> So the idea was to create a new thermal zone and that work as any other thermal zone. So uh, we could eventually, uh, if that makes sense, uh, bind uh, cooling cooling device to this uh, aggregated aggregated thermal zone and uh, do any other uh, use case we do uh, if uh, other uh, real hardware thermal zone. Uh, I made two proposals about it. Uh, the first one was to create uh, some kind of uh, uh, driver that was uh, taking the virtual zone and doing the aggregation. Um, it was rejected. And the second one was more uh, close to be accepted. Uh, one uh, thing that was blocking was uh, some rework to do in the thermal framework. So, I'm here now to try to uh, rework this uh, last proposition and to make it accepted. Uh, one uh, thing that was also, also not good was uh, I was only focusing on the device tree. So the next was the next um, patch set will uh, fix that. So the idea will be to create. Uh, uh, a generic a new file to do the aggregations. Uh, so why I, I'd like to avoid to just doing uh, mod modifying the current functions uh, to avoid increasing the compute time of the uh, thermal uh, functions. So I'd like to propose a new set of functions that could be used instead of the regular one if we need to do some aggregation. Uh, so uh, I would I would like to uh, implement it uh, uh, using the existing device tree bindings. Uh, this has been lost, but uh, before we move to the YAML format, uh, there was some discussion of the <laughs> aggregations. Uh, actually, it was called uh, multiple sensors, and uh, there were some uh, kind of uh, mathematical um, data to compute the, the value of the sensors. So the idea would be to use the same uh, what already exists, is it, 
and eventually add also uh, some uh, other aggregation functions such as the maximum or minimum value if that makes sense and if it could be useful. Uh, there is a couple of things that uh, make it still difficult to, to implement. Uh, currently, if we want to do some aggregation, uh, we have to, we still have to call the vendor operations uh, functions to get the value and to do the uh, average of uh, time the, to compute the yield sensor value. <coughs> Um, yeah, as I said, I'd like to avoid uh, to do a lot of computation for a simple sensor. We don't need to have all the aggregations done if we only have one sensor. And the way to register a thermal, uh, thermal zone uh, is quite complex when we want to do uh, multiple sensors. Uh, basically, when we register the, that the driver that registers the thermal zone, and basically it goes through uh, device tree, register all the thermal zone defined in the device tree. And uh, if we want to do a multiple sensor thermal zone, uh, we don't have uh, a driver or something existing for this uh, multiple thermal sensor zone. So what I did was some, was a kind of uh, workaround to be able to register from the driver uh, person. So uh, I, I was uh, how to explain that. I was registering. Uh, I was registering the expected thermal zone as them, uh, requested by the driver, and if. The, there were another thermal zone using, using this sensor for multiple thermal sensor zone. Uh, I was also adding it to this uh, virtual uh, to this multiple sensor thermal zone. So that's clear. Uh, that's all. So do, do you have a question? I think so. So I'm, I'm assuming that um, this is intended for in-kernel consumers, because if it was outside the kernel, you could just run a script and aggregate those, those temperatures outside. Um, so do you have a specific use case in mind? I, like, I, I understand things more if I know one of the use cases or a couple of use cases. Uh, one, one of the first use cases coming in mind is, for example, you have you want to use the power allocator, the IPA, to mitigate the CPU. So if you have multiple sensors, which one you will choose to mitigate? Because you have the IPA will be dealing with the cooling devices, the same cooling device. So you can aggregate the cooling devices decision in the thermal framework directly, but <clears throat> the IPA is not uh, inclined to, to work with, uh, with several instances. Mm -hmm. So, by aggregating all, the, aggregating all the, the, the sensors into the same thermal zone, you can use a single governor to manage all the CPUs. But, but then, you have to, then you have to bind your cooling devices to the thermal zone as well, right? Right. Okay. I have a question on the remote. On remote? Okay. Lucas, yeah. Yeah. Hi, guys. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, yeah, this is Lukas Luba speaking, the IPA maintainer. So this, this looks like a really nice feature if you could do this multi-sensor thermal zone kind of stuff. Because currently if you have, uh, let's say, one sensor per CPU plus GPU, and IPA works only with thermal zone with one sensor, and let's say this is SOC sensor, then you cannot react properly for hotspot on one of those CPUs, for instance. And if there is a way to loop over all the sensors and at least get the maximum for and figure out the hotspot, that would be really useful because we have to split the power budget for the whole SOC 
but actually in some safety boundaries, like avoiding the hotspot uh, temperature issue. So this would be one of the use cases, which is, for instance, uh, there are some already existing boards which don't have that support and IPA doesn't work well on them at mainline. And they are mainline boards. Okay, thanks for the I'm, comment. I'm not sure that it's a good thing if we uh, aggregate sensors, um, if they are not tied together in the same, uh, same performance domain. Otherwise, we will, uh, and we will end up having... Uh, well, so that's, that's why three of us wanted to have the information about which are involved, right? Right. Because then, then if you know that, then you can take that into account. All right, I think that we need to move to the next topic. So let's, let's talk, let, let's move the conversation <laughs> to, to mailing lists and so on. Going forward. So thank you.